<laughs> well, um, the names have some similarity to them, but uh, but they are distinct. Mm-hmm. What in terms of the the function though, Cadenza Artists is a full service agency. So okay. we are representing the artists that we represent. Um, many of the artists on our roster were exclusively representing everything they do. So we're responsible really for the bread on their table and we take that very seriously. Um, and we're booking tours and shows for them internationally and sending them on tour. Um, so we, we work with both individual artists and with large scale shows and projects mm-hmm. where we could be touring as many as 43 people with sets and with, you know, with complex technology that's being shipped all over the world etc um so it can get quite quite complex and quite um logistically complicated too yeah um, but that's cadenza artists and then i cadenza what we handle is i mean we do everything from online education to coaching we have some coaching programs as well that we recently launched that i'm really really excited about uh, we have this incredible coaching program that's called idea to impact launch Mm -hmm. your breakthrough arts venture that we just launched actually last week so that's been really exciting getting to work with those artists that have signed on to that and and more are signing on every week so that's been kind of fun to watch and then we also do work individually with artists both through consulting and through management and that's all within the icadenza scope Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also do work with organizations through iCadenza as well. And that's that's kind of a, another difference between iCadenza and Cadenza artists is that um, through iCadenza, we end up doing a lot of um, a lot of consulting projects with institutions. So we actually work with the Peabody Institute um, that's kind of under the Johns Hopkins umbrella in Baltimore. We do work with the Frost School of Music in Miami. We do work with conferences and conventions like Chorus America, et cetera, um, mm-hmm. as well as other arts organizations that we're doing organizational consulting for. So it's really a broader kind of cross-section, a, a broader set of services that we offer through iCadenza. Mm-hmm. When you first f- come across an artist, so actually, so actually, let's, let's go into that one. Um, artists you represent, do you find them or do they find you? Or how does that work? Both. All of the above. Um, (laughs) Yeah, and oftentimes artists that approach us are really looking to have us take their career into our hands and launch it and make it happen for them. And unfortunately, it doesn't really work like that. When you're looking for management or agency representation, you really want to have your career be further along so that it's already already kind of on, on a level. It's already happening and it's active and you're looking to either raise it to the next level or uh, you know work with a partner to continue that activity on a bigger scale Mm -hmm. Um, but not to launch it from the get-go and that's why we do a lot of the consulting work and and a lot of the you know programs and online courses and and um, different offerings to really help artists kind of get through that catch-22 and to get things launched and to get their career to that point um, where they could be seeking out a partner but um, but we do get a lot of a lot of inquiries from artists some of which uh, have led to us having that those kinds of deeper conversations um, but really yeah we get connected with artists through all sorts of different different avenues and sometimes we actually just meet them mm-hmm. um, at conferences or at random events and it just you know by happenstance um, but the kinds of artists that we're looking for we're kind of specific about um, so, you know, we're, we're always kind of keeping that in mind and we've been through, through the process of working with artists so many times now. Um, and we've been so privileged to get to work with so many different kinds of artists that I think we have a good sense for who works well with us and who we work well with as well. What kinds of personality types and what kinds of artists artistically. Mm-hmm. When, so when, let's say greener artists approach you. Is there a specific type of skill that they are they are consistently missing, or is it just kind of, or is it is it I guess is it very based on on the type of individual? I was just curious to see if there's like similar patterns that you've already spotted with new artists and what they are consistently behind on or missing. 
Yeah, that's a great question. I think I would say that one of the things that is often missing with greener artists, as you said, are artists that are kind of just kind of in the earlier throes of their process. Yeah. Um, is that they haven't really figured out what they stand for and they haven't figured out how to articulate it. Um, so they're coming to us basically saying, you know, I want to perform more. Mm-hmm. I am a singer, you know, <laughs> and um, it doesn't really help us visualize what their success might look like. And also kind of secondarily, but related to that, they don't have a vision for what their career could look like. Mm -hmm. They don't have a vision for that big dream happening. They're not, you know, I think often, especially classical artists, but really across the board, um, artists are so afraid of, of being perceived as a diva or wanting too much or asking for too much, um, that they just don't ask for anything at all. And they don't, they don't stand for anything at all. They're just sort of like there to take whatever they can get because they feel like that's the artist's role. And the truth is that artists that succeed in their careers long term, they know what they want. They know they they are they are visually or visualizing a real. Let me let me say that again. <laughs> they are visualizing a reality that doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. And they're very, very clear on what that visual is and what that can be like and what that would feel like and what that would mean and what would come with that. And um, maybe sometimes even the challenges that would come with that, but they still want it and they know what that looks like. And they know as a result what their holes are and what's missing right now and where where we fit into that. And that is the best kind of artist for us to work with when they really understand where they're trying to go and what they're trying to do. And then we can say, do I want to opt into that? Do I want, do I want to work on that for the next three, five, 10, who knows how long we'll be working with that artist years. You know, yeah. uh, we always, every artist that we take on for representation, we're looking at, you know, our intention is a long-term relationship. So it could well be many, many years of work together and we better be behind whatever it is that they really want to do. And um, that better be exciting for us. But when they don't stand for something, when they don't have clarity on what that is that they want to be known for and what that vision might look like, then we're kind of in this nebulous land where we're trying to imagine what that could be. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm a firm believer that 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 visual and that vision should come from the artist because it's their life at the end of the day. You know, yeah. it's their life, it's their legacy, it's their face, it's their voice, it's their sound it's it's their soul that's up there sharing and connecting um you know our job is to bring out the best in them and to set them up for the best possible outcomes but it's them up there um so it's not my place to say this is your vision mm -hmm. all i can do is say hey you're not thinking you're not dreaming big enough you're you can you know what do you really want and keep asking that question until they're ready to share um but so with new artists that approach us, if they don't have that clarity, it's harder to imagine what their potential could be. And it's harder to get behind it. Yeah. The other thing that I would say is also very related to that is presentation overall. And that comes down to, you know, your videos. Video is so important these days and it's so cheap to produce that there's really no excuse not to have high quality video. Mm -hmm. Uh and without it, it's really hard to imagine what the artist is about. Um, and, um, you know, the, the bio, the way you describe what you do, getting very, very specific. Um, when we don't have that, we have to dig for it through their materials. And it's the same thing with presenting organizations. You know, they end up having to dig for this stuff and nobody has time to do that. Um, so it just doesn't happen and then they don't get booked. Um, so so that's what we look for as well is how clearly is the message being articulated and how strong are the materials because um, that helps us digest it and it would help us promote them if we were actually working with them. Yeah. So you said something very interesting about some artists not dreaming big enough, which I found interesting. Do you, do you think that comes from a fear of selling out or is it just part of training in the arts where you are you know told that you're lucky to be working and you're lucky to be in this position 
and you should just take what's given to you. I think it's both, but I also think it's partly perhaps our generation and, and the, the social media generation that we're all a part of and, and kind of the way that we consume information and the way that we create or don't create. Um, I think that to dream and to really declare that I am, I'm about X, Y, Z, or I'm going to ABC, mm-hmm. uh, you have to have a little bit of space and perspective in which to conceive of those ideas. And I think that in our world today, there's just not a lot of space for that. Um, And I also think that because of social media and people that are kind of that person that just all they do is post about their successes and like their trips or, you know, it's like they're this, this glamorous, incredible existence that they have. Um, And People that are more modest look at that and they're like, I don't want to be like that or I don't want to be the overly self-promoting artist who just constantly invites people to things or asks them to donate or, you know, whatever. I don't want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. And I think that out of fear of that and busyness overall, between those two things, it's you end up just sort of kind of deciding I'm not going to do anything. I'm just, you know, I don't want to be perceived that way. And, um, I don't know, you know, I do think that the training that that a lot of artists get also feeds into that, you know, and in just school in general where you don't want to stand out too much. You don't want to draw too much attention to yourself. Um, you want to be a team player. Um, and I don't think any of those things need to go out the window. I think that being a decent human being and being a collaborative person is a really, really important set of values that is under underappreciated or under recognized maybe mm-hmm. um but is hugely a part of everyone's decision making you know it's it's hugely a part of how we decide who we want to work with um on every front of what we do because life is just too short you know i want to work with people that are pleasant to work with and that are good partners and um, so all of that is important i think you can have that spirit in how you work and i definitely encourage artists to have that spirit um, but believing in something and standing for something and believing that you have that special spark to make something magical happen and that you are called to do that are two different things. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think that distinction is is very challenging for people to make psychologically. Yeah. Um, and, and we're certainly not trained to do that. Sure, sure. So in your... In your j- personal journey, and also those times when you come across artists who are who are fearful, how have you approached fear and gotten over it? And how do you work with the artists that you come across who are battling with with fear and apprehension? And how do you help them get past that? That's a great question. Um, I think the first the first step to dealing with fear is recognizing that it's completely natural Mm -hmm. and that it's, it's never, it's, it's honestly, whenever you do anything that's else, I, okay, I'm going to back up for a second. Whenever you do something that is of significance, that is perhaps a new approach, at least a new approach for you, Mm -hmm. you're stepping outside of your own comfort zone. And whenever you step out of your comfort zone, and, and by the way, your comfort zone is everything, is the stuff that you're used to. It's the stuff that you're used to doing. It's the patterns, the mental patterns, the um, physical patterns, your life patterns. And the longer we all live and inhabit this earth, the more ingrained those habits and patterns become. So, And they start to turn into our belief systems. And um, our belief systems really turn into our comfort zone that kind of keeps us relatively sane and uh and keeps us in a zone of of comfort in our lives that's why it's called the comfort zone obviously but (laughs) the moment that you start doing something that's different even if it's not actually that dangerous or that hard or or whatever it is anything that you do that's not normal Mm -hmm. activity is stepping out of the comfort zone and um, once you do that, fear comes into 
into the mix just by virtue of your system saying, hey, this is not normal. This is 